it will certainly give us a different equation. And our job, our problem is very specific about what our X and Y should be. So we are changing our Y's into decimal minutes. So no seconds, we don't want any seconds, we want everything in minutes. Okay, so I know it was your birthday, but you still have to do this. You have the calculator, we're changing these into decimal minutes, okay? Once you get those changed, then go back into your calculator and let's put that in as L1 and L2. Okay? So L1 is going to be the years after 17, or 1972. And L2 is going to be these new decimals that you got. So let's do that. Everybody do that. And we're going to see if we can come up with the data that we need to come up with. By the way, we're working on B. We'll talk about A in a second, but we're working on B right now, using our calculator <coughs> to find an expression for this. So once you get them in, then you're going to go to stat, calc, and do a linear regression. Anybody got a line yet? is fine, and then plus 13.2 one four. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I'm sorry I marked that wrong. Right, okay there. All right. Did anybody else get this? Oscar and I did. Luke did. Okay, so the three of us are right. Everybody else is wrong. Sorry. Go back and figure out what you did wrong. Again, those Y values need to be the decimal equivalents for 13 minutes and 16 seconds. So 13 plus 16 divided by 60. That would be your first Y value, and then your second Y, and so on. All right? So 
I don't want to take up any more class time because we have to review other stuff too. But so this is the answer, right? This is what we're going with is the answer. Now, what percentage of the variation in the data does this model explain? That is your R squared. You should have gotten an R squared, and if you didn't get this, then your R squared is going to be different. But if you got this, your R squared is 87.547. That is the R squared number right off of the calculator, the R squared. And then, what is R of 60, and what does this mean? Well, here's your equation. What happens if you put 60 into it? Well, remember, you can do that on your calculator by just putting in your Y. So go to your variables, pick Y, and then in parentheses, put 60. And it gives me um, R60 is 12.251. See, I messed that up the first time. Okay, now what does that mean? That's what I get when I put 60 in. What does that mean? 60 years after 1972. So in, what would that be, 1972, 2032? The time will be, what? Now let's change that back. What's the unit on this? 12.251 minutes. So it's gonna be 12 minutes and how many seconds? Fifteen, about twelve, fifteen. All right. What is the residual for R of twenty three? Now, twenty three is in your table, right? So there's no need to calculate this by hand. Go back to Sked Edit and go across to your residual, and what is the residual for um, uh, what was it, 23? What did you come up with in your chart? The residual for 23. I got negative 0.1116 if I am looking at the right number. I gotta double check. Yeah. Anybody else get that? So what does that mean? Now, I, I have to agree. I have been a little remiss because all I've been asking you for is, okay, first of all, what does a negative residual mean? That model over predicted, right? So the time the model predicts is higher than the actual time. Right? So, can, so that explains a little bit. The actual time is less than the model predicts. The actual time is 0.1116 minutes less than the model predicts. So we could change that. I mean, depending on just how, how much we want to say, 0.1116 times 60, it's actually about 6.696 6 seconds, the model predicts 6.696 6 minute, or, yeah, minutes, seconds, minutes, did I do seconds? Seconds, 6 point that many seconds, less than, or more than the actual time was. The, the actual time is 6.696 less than the model would predict. That many seconds less than the model would predict. Right? Okay. What does this mean? We did that one. 
Okay, now on the back side, on the back side we did a lot better. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about that. If you have questions about that, you can come in um, if you want and, and look at that. I'm not gonna talk about those. You did much better. Um, problem number three caused some of you some real grief um, just because of the arithmetic. Um, so you just want to be careful with your arithmetic there, but um, I think you knew what you were doing, basically. Okay? All right, so put that away. Make sure you know how to do that process. For Wednesday or Thursday or Wednesday. Okay. Did anybody look at the Magic Square review? All right. No one did. I didn't. Who did? Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you. What did you look at, Kennedy? Or what did you have a question about, I should say? Slope is three halves. So y plus 14 equals three halves x plus five. I'm getting three halves x minus 13 halves, but I could have made a mistake. So now what? To answer the question, now I'll just slip in 5. So it's going to be 15 halves. I think that works out just to be 1, doesn't it? Is that okay with everybody? I want to show you something else. The difference between this x and this x is 4. Would you agree with that? And the difference between this y and this y is 6. So since this distance is 4, shouldn't this distance be 6 in a line? So that's another way you could think about it if you wanted to. This certainly looks more like mathematical. Okay. All right, what else? Kennedy, do you have anything else? O. O? Yeah. In the figure above, the graph of polynomial function is shown as a solid curve. The graph of G, shown as a dotted curve, is a transformation where G of X equals F of X plus H. 
minus two would go right to, but it's important that we keep this in the plus mode because this number right here is my H. So my H is negative two and my K is negative one. So K minus H is negative three. Oh no, positive one, it's a minus, positive one. Right, so this this is just random made up. You had to find your K and your H. That was the key to the problem. Okay? Anna? Anna. A? No. A. N? No. Uh, one, A. So the values of polynomial function are shown above. Alright, so it's another table. to do a bunch of transformations to this. So g of x, I'm going to do something to f of x. All right, so what are we doing? A horizontal dilation by a factor of 3. So that means we are multiplying the horizontal by 3 which means this number right here has to be a one third. That's how you multiply horizontally by three. You divide <coughs> by one third. A vertical dilation by a factor of two. What does that mean? Two. That number multiplies the height, multiplies the vertical. And a vertical translation by seven. Plus seven. If g of m is five, so keep in mind this is the this is the new this is f. This is the new function. So g of m is five. That would be two f. So now we're going to solve this little equation. So what would you suggest we do first? Subtract the 7. And then divide by 2. negative one. So at this point now I need to look at my chart because f of something is negative one. Well in the chart f of what is negative one? one? f of one? 
So this has got to be 1, which means 1 third m has to be 1, which means m is 3. talk about that forever. I just happened to look at it. Find the coefficient of a term containing x squared, and then what is the result when you divide it by 6? I don't know what that is. Some random thing. But what is the coefficient x plus 3 to the 4? And we want the coefficient on x squared. So first of all, you recognize that if I foiled that out four times, there would be an x squared in there somewhere, right? In fact, wouldn't the first term be x to the fourth, and the next one would be x cubed, and the next one would be x squared? Remember that, the countdown? Now, next to each of these would also be a three, though. Each term is gonna have an x and a three. Each term is. And the powers on these two pieces have to add up to 4. So this would be 0 and 1 and 2. So this really is the term that I'm looking at. But in addition to an x and a 3, this is also going to have a coefficient that comes from Pascal's triangle. And since it's to the fourth power, I'll look at the fourth row. Now, I have it memorized because I'm a math teacher. I do this all the time. You know how to build the triangle, and you would only be going to the fourth row, so it would be really easy. There's the fourth row. Just one more. And, yeah, what? So, the, do the, does the one, what's the first row? One, one. It's one, one. It's not one. Well, that's technically the zeroth row is to the zeroth power. So this is to the first power and the second and the third and the fourth is the one here. This number right here tells you. Okay, so the coefficient I want is the third one, which happens to be six. So there's my term. Six x squared times nine or 54x squared. So the coefficient is 54. And then to make all his little game work here, he says divide it by 6. So divided by 6 would be 9. But that's all, that's just something he did to make the, the triangle, his little magic square work. All right? Just having to look at that one. Um, all right, tell me what else do we need to look at here? change is negative 2 on that interval. Which root in problem C, which root 
has a multiplicity of two. Negative four, perfect. X equals negative four, beautiful. Might as well do A on this page. What is the degree of that polynomial? Four, four beautiful. I'm looking at D now, I'm just going through an order since so you guys didn't look at these. <clears throat> the polynomial function is given by this. The function has two distinct real zeros. What is the value of the largest zero? Yeah, I heard somebody say something. <coughs> that second, that binomial, or that uh, trinomial term, factors into x minus 5, x plus 2. So the distinct roots, the distinct zeros are 5 and negative 2. So the biggest one is 5. Polynomial function is an odd function. f of 3 is negative 7. So what's f of negative 3? Positive 7. Because what happens when you're odd? Change the sign on the in, we'll change the sign on the out. Okay, we did F already. G, the graph has a horizontal asymptote at B. What is the, what is the value of B? That's kind of easy. Negative one, right? H, the function has a vertical asymptote at A. What is the value of A? Probably should factor it first. So negative five is gonna be a whole, right? But that's not the question. The question is, where's the vertical asymptote? vertical asymptote is at 8. X equals 8. Polynomial function is given by this equation. What is the smallest value of m that is possible if the function has the following characteristics? What does that mean? What, what do those limits tell me? Down, down. down, down. And if it's down, down, doesn't it have to be even degree? And it's got a negative coefficient. So six? Translation by negative 3. Horizontal translation by negative 3 would put what in the parentheses? X plus 3. Vertical dilation by a factor of 2. And a vertical translation, that means pick it up and move it, by a factor of 4. How does that look to everybody? Okay. So now we want to find g of 2. Just straight up find g of 2. So that's going to be 2 times, or two times f of 5 plus 4. Well, what's f of 5? Oh, shoot. Okay. So... How did I get, what's the, I, I know f of 2. Okay, so let's just look at a point here. If x is 2, um, y is 2. According to this translation, if I move this, 
I don't want to go left. I, I want to go. go. What? I can't hear you. I thought we would do it the way we did the other one, like subtract four and divide by two. Um, well, before I knew what this value was. Do I know what that value is? That's what I'm looking for, right? Um, so that's, that's I, I still, I'm going to have to, I, I need an x value to get started here. Because I don't know what g of 2 is, so I can subtract 4 and divide by 2, but then I'm still going to have f of 5 over there, and I don't know what that is. So what I'm trying to think of now is, do I know an f value that I can back it up, um, back it up 3? But if I back this one up 3, I'm at negative 1. That doesn't really help me. So whatever f of 5 is, am I missing something here? I'm trying to figure this out. I back up 3. Times it by 2. get from F to G, I back up 3. To get from G to F, I go forward 3. <coughs> I don't know. Let me think about that one. I don't know. I don't know. That, that's going to take some creativity. Let's, does anybody see anything? Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, K. The graph is shown above. The extrema are labeled, and a point of inflection is labeled. Function K is decreasing, and the graph of K is concave down <coughs> on the interval from P to Q. What is the value of P? All right, so the function is decreasing and concave down. So can you find an interval where that is happening? Decreasing and concave down. Forget the PQ part. Can you do it in terms of the letters that are listed there? From B to C? We're concave down and decreasing. So P is B. So what is the value of P? Well, it's whatever B is, which, what is that? Negative two. Rational function has a slant asymptote, find the y-intercept basically is a slant asymptote. What would we do here for problem I or L? So what's B? Seven. We did M. Uh, we did N. We did O. P. When I have this graph, there's a hole. What is the Y coordinate of the hole? So what are you going to do with this? Factor everything. And hopefully something will cancel. So we're going to have a hole at 
comma something, and the something is what we want. So it looks like that's going to be three comma, I'm going to put three in here. So that's going to be, okay. So it says what's the y coordinate it is. So that's all except the one. Except the one. All right. Now, I've given you already a review sheet for a quiz on Wednesday. He did not have on this review, he did not have much calculator work. We've already done the review sheet. Just make sure that you are able to. Use your calculator. Because the quiz is going to look like a review sheet with some extra stuff in there. I want to hand out some stuff for chapter for unit two, because we'll be getting started with that.